Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review Spawn. Born in Darkness, Sworn to Justice. Directed by Mark A.Z. Dippe, starring Michael J. White, John Leguizamo, Martin Sheen, Teresa Randall, Nicole Williamson, and D.B. Sweeney. Based on the comic book of the same name from Todd McFarlane, spawns about Al Simmons, a mercenary who's killed, who's sent back to Earth to cause the apocalypse, then lead Hell's army in a war against Hell and Heaven. But really the movie's about a cool ass guy in a neat suit who fights a clown guy who is terrorizing his old family. This is a retrospective review, I know. It shouldn't be because this is 97, but that's old enough. And we just want to talk shit. And we're gonna talk spoilers and we're gonna talk about the whole movie as it is. So what did we like? I really liked how they adapted this into a live action movie. Whether it's a video game or a comic book, sometimes they really don't pull from the source material. They don't get the costume right. They don't get the actors right, but they did a great job making this feel like the Spawn comics. Yeah, well, it deviated a little bit from the like the story, I guess. The look and the feel and the grittiness just was exactly Todd McFarlane. And thankfully, because that's what made Spawn comics so cool. Just how R-rated they were. I bought the first one in 93 when it came out. It warped my mind a little bit. Maybe it helped push me into the horror territory. Who knows? But it's something that we as kids read and watched on TV because the animated series was out and was also like R-rated. Or maybe not R-rated, but definitely not something that we should have been watching as kids. And I just loved the whole look of this movie and how it didn't hold back. I also thought they did a great job in their casting. My personal favorite is gonna go out to John Gazamo, I think he nailed clown. Funny, funny, he's our man if he can't kill him, no I can't. When you're reading the comics, it's exactly what John Legazamo did there. And even playing the part of Violator. He was just really good in his delivery and the look. And the fact that he probably like wore like 70 pounds of makeup, maybe more, and was crouching the whole time. I don't mind being short, fat, and ugly, but the pay sucks. To make him look like a little Danny DeVito in Batman Returns, just <laughs> squatting. Except he's not nearly as small as Danny. But you know, we respect him. Well, we don't respect him too much because he is a filthy little shithead of a clown, but he did a good job. Martin Sheen in this was weird. He had like this deep grizzled voice and he, he looked like Kane Hodder and was acting really strange. <laughs> Whole world is going to hell in a handbasket, but thanks to him, it's just another story on the five o'clock news. But he played a really good bad guy, like somebody you knew for no reason at all. You just knew that he was a really bad guy, even though you had no idea how he was in such a position of power. It wasn't really explained. He was just always working on special op stuff on his little mini discs. Worth noting, we do have some Miko Hughes. Hey mister, you don't look so good. You all know Gage from Pet Cemetery, but also that little adorable child from Kindergarten Cop that everyone loves so much. Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. Well, he's here as Zach, and he did a pretty solid job. And horror fans might also recognize Melinda Clark as Julie Walker from Return of the Living Dead 3, the sexiest zombie to ever walk the earth. And in this, she was a fucking babe too, but she was like an assassin babe. She had all those sweet outfits, her work outfit, to her work outfit. Which was really just putting on like a little diamond thing on top of her front, I guess. While she's still dual wielding these <laughs> ridiculously futuristic guns. I hate how back in the day, all future guns were like boxes. But then again, we look at that Tesla Jeep and we're like, well, maybe we are going that direction. I was very thrown off, but greatly enjoyed that Frank Welker, who is a voice actor, he's the voice of Dr. Claw. And I think he nailed Mel Bolgia. I put you on Earth to make sure Spawn keeps his end of the bargain. Back to Spawn. He's just like a badass, but he also has like this emotional like drive to him. He's a badass for a reason because he was fucked over. And then he comes back five years later and his friend is now with his ex fiance. Like he's living the life that he wanted to live. So you can feel the pain in Spawn. 
as he's like trying to get this redemption by killing the other people and then confronting his friend about this whole situation. It's both heartbreaking and awesome in the way that he does it. To boot, we have that sweet costume. I was a little nervous that the effects weren't gonna hold up, but Man, it did. The actual suit and his makeup looked great, but they nailed the cape. The cape? Definitely a hot take on John's part, because <laughs> I know that people fucking hate the visual effects in this movie. But you have to take into consideration the time period as well, because this was kind of cutting edge at the time. I mean, Reboot was coming out around the same time, and it was blowing people's minds. And that looks like trash now. This looks reasonable. Malbogia still looks like trash, <laughs> but other things like Violator when he's in the alley, they were cutting between the CG and like a big practical Violator head. That looked amazing. The overall flow of the movie was really clean too. Uh, there was some kind of spotty exposition at times, but there are some great action sequences. There are enjoyable moments with Spawn just being the Spawn that you know from the comics. And even just kind of like the chase of Clown and Spawn, because at first they're kind of buddy-buddy, and then things change. Just think of me as your guardian angel, the clown from hell. Get away from me, you bunch-packing midget. Before we move on, we recorded a commentary, our first viewing in like 20 years. We recorded commentary, link is in the description to the Patreon. I got my uncle to paint a spawn mural on the wall. And so we had a big ass spawn that was like 20 feet high in my goddamn living room. That's... It was the coolest thing. I really enjoyed the location of this film. I was very impressed with Rat City. It looked like a place I wouldn't want to be. But Absolutely not. But definitely like the place that Spawn lived in. It felt like Gotham City. Yeah, it felt like almost <laughs> like Tim Burton was like, yo, let's bring Gotham to this town. He was initially tapped to be the director, to be honest. That's why you could picture Danny DeVito playing clown. In the new one? We need Danny DeVito, damn it. He's a trash man. Trash, trash, trash. Speaking of trash, what didn't we like? Some of the CG was shit. They did some great things back then for the time. Does it hold up now? Not so much. There are definitely very terrible effects. Even like the first scene. Okay. Night vision doesn't look bad. Missiles don't look bad. Triangle explosion of a jet. And then it only continues from there. Hell itself was pretty weak with the mini spawns. I was not a fan Quit of Quit calling spawns. them the mini spawns. They look they're, like little mini spawns. They're regular sized spawns. They're just far away. It felt like Army of Darkness and it was just a bunch of like little, little ashes running around. In... They weren't doing shit though. They were just standing there like waiting for like, can any one of you assholes please be our commander? Like Violator Strong. Violator later probably could have led them. And that's what's kind of like dumb about it too, is like they gave Al the power and all of a sudden he's using that power against him. Imagine sitting there looking like your big papa here. Hey, who are you giving the powers to? I've been waiting li literally hundreds of years. Like you got enough powers, we'll give it to this new guy. He's like you're too busy <laughs> clowning around. That's probably true. <laughs> he's gonna make some fart jokes and just drink some Manhattans at like a kid's party. I guess what this general dislike is, they could have shaved off centuries of this whole situation. Check it. Spawn's a big idiot. Look, he's been through hell. <laughs> that guy's still wearing mithril armor. Why didn't he get a spot? Well, he wasn't going to. But I mean, he's from the old times. The ye old times. All right, you overgrown gecko. Come on, get your throat cut. Even though I enjoyed the pacing of this movie, I felt the story arc was just kind of all over the place. You didn't know what direction they were actually trying to go. Like at one moment when Clown reveals that he's Violator, you're thinking, oh, this is obviously like the final battle. And then he gets impaled and you're like, oh fuck, it's over. Well, I thought that 10 minutes prior to that, when he like shot up a bunch of people and he killed the girl, mm -hmm. I'm like, whoa, wait a second. You can't kill like the main people that you went to kill right away. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. I'm not gonna lie, there's some nostalgia attached to this one because I've always been a massive Spawn fan. So to revisit this, I was so excited. And it didn't disappoint. It was better than I remembered, which was kind of shocking after like quickly glancing over Rotten Tomatoes and seeing an 18%. I just can't fathom how that could be. There are absolutely some faults when it comes to the visual effects and how the movie's kind of all over the place. And if you didn't read the comics, 
you would be like, what is this? Like, especially with the, like, the shit humor from Clown. Like, he's a very strange character, and there are definitely some weird decisions, but it's part of the charm of Spawn and Clown and Violator. I think all of the actors did an excellent job. The practical effects were great. The suit and the look of Spawn was just so on point, and even some of the visual effects worked well for the time. I didn't necessarily love this movie, but I will absolutely watch it again. So I'm gonna give this three digging my my own grave out of five. Die digging. Now I know there's a lot wrong with this film, but it's hard to hate on it, especially if you collected the comics. Revisiting this, I still love everything that has spawned. Like this movie definitely holds up. They did a great job in adapting this comic book into a movie because we've seen so many failed attempts from other comic books gone to movies before that just didn't work out. I enjoyed a lot of this movie. I strangely enjoyed the visual effects. There are some bad ones, but outside of that, Rat City looks great. The fight in Rat City with Violator and Spawn was a really good fight, and I just had a really good time with this movie. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this film three and a half classy clowns out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you have any, you do want to check it out. Links are in the description. And if you want to hear the full cool ass commentary that we did first link right in the description you don't even have to click the little bar to go in there because i know most of you don't hit it up listen to the commentary throw the movie on and enjoy the ride and if this is your first time here make sure you subscribe to the channel stay up to date with everything bloodbath and beyond